Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to Sermon Snippets. We are just getting into the book of Philippians, which is one of the four prison epistles written by Paul. Um, While he was in prison, he wrote the four books, Philippians, Ephesians, Philemon, and Colossians. So we are looking at the book of Philippians, and last time we went through Paul's opening prayer, and the thought that stuck with me most was God's faithfulness and the fact that we can serve him. And we even see God's faithfulness all the way back at the founding of the church of Philippi in the book of Acts. But what stuck out to me the most was verse 6, where he he talked about um, the fact that he could trust God and serve him. So let's jump right into it today, verse 12. If you have your Bible there with you, um, we're starting in Philippians 1.12. He says, But I would... You should understand, brethren, that the things which have happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit. Of Jesus Christ. And we're going to stop right there and pick it up there next time. So Paul starts out by saying that the things which had happened to him actually advanced the spread of the gospel. And this is the first place in this book that we see the theme for the entire letter. His whole life was about Christ. And basically Paul is saying that even in his suffering, even while he was imprisoned and he was going through this this trial, he still was participating in the gospel. He says that his life was a representation of Christ. And so we see that he's he himself is an example of the gospel story. Now, just a general principle of studying the book of Philippians, the whole book really revolves around chapter 2. And we're going to get there, uh, Lord willing, soon, where we see, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And it goes on and gives this description of the Messiah, and it gives the gospel account there in chapter 2, when we get to that uh, messianic poem. But for right now, he's basically saying, that his life is a representation of the gospel, that he is a living picture of the Messiah. And I think there's a lesson for us to learn here. Um, I heard a pastor recently say, sometimes it isn't our liberties, but our confinement, which provides the greatest vehicle for the gospel. I'm going to say that one more time. He said, sometimes it isn't our liberties, but our confinement which provides the greatest vehicle for the gospel. You know, so often we are not willing to sacrifice our liberties, even if that could allow the gospel to go forth. And we see that's the case here with Paul. He sacrificed his liberties. He was wrongfully imprisoned on trumped up charges. And he said that he embraced that opportunity to share the gospel. And his imprisonment had several advantages in his mind. Number one, the government officials and soldiers noticed Paul. He said, so that in my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. So the government officials, the soldiers, they noticed Paul. Also, secondly, Paul's testimony inspired boldness in other believers. He says in verse 14, in many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. And then the third advantage, so the government officials, the people around the palace notice Paul. Um, Also Paul's testimony inspired boldness in other Christians. But thirdly, 
even those trying to cause trouble preached Christ. So let's let's dive into this section right here, the next couple of verses. Um, he says, Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. So he goes and talks about these two different groups of people. Um, basically, um, verses 15 through 18, it seems to describe those people who were preaching the gospel out of spite towards Paul or in order to get him into more trouble with the officials. So this is basically to add to Paul's pain. Um, these people are, uh, it seems as though they were trying to get at Paul or they're trying to preach Christ based on um, verse 16, for example. It says, preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bond. So to make things worse, on top of Paul's imprisonment, you have these people who are preaching Christ just to try to get him into more trouble. And I can't help but think of our own political scene where you have members of one camp pose as members of another camp and go participate in vandalism and in order to incite hatred towards their political enemies. And it seems as though that's basically what's happening here. But regardless, their doctrine was correct, but their hearts weren't. So how do we see Paul respond? To these people. Well, he says, with joy. He says, um, what then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice. He responds with joy. He says, yea, and will rejoice. Well, that's a joy that only comes from Christ. He didn't get mixed up in the politics, or he didn't start calling people out, because he realized that the real issue was the gospel. And my friends, we need to recognize that every issue is a gospel issue. Just read the book of Acts. Paul got thrown into jail for all kinds of trumped up charges, yet he always pointed the issue back to Christ. So let that be a reminder for us that instead of getting mixed up in the politics of the current um, climate in America, instead of getting down in the weeds on those surface level issues, the heart of the matter is the gospel issue. So Paul mentions this suffering that he's being faced with. And I must ask the question, so how do you respond to suffering that the Lord takes you through? Can others see an example of Christ in the way you handle pain? Listen, no one knew pain like Jesus Christ did. And I'm not saying that it's going to be easy, what I'm saying is that Christ has been there, and he will be with you to strengthen you through the difficulty. And others will see him in the way that you respond to suffering. I hope that's true of your life. It was certainly true of Paul's life. He said that through this suffering, his imprisonment, through even um, some of the politics, the drama that was going on, he said it had fallen out rather unto the furtherance of of the gospel. Well, I wish we could get down into verse 19 and verse 20, but we'll have to save that discussion for next time, and we'll come back and look at um, how he's describing salvation in those verses. Um, but until next time, I hope you have a great day in the Lord, and you're able to walk worthy of Jesus Christ today.